Okay, I think we can get started here. Um, looks like everybody has joined. So thank you everybody for, uh, for joining us today. My name is uh, Bruce Bianco um, and with my colleague Gerard Frederic, um, we will be taking you through a quick um, introduction and demo of a new self service kiosk. Um, a couple of housekeeping. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A and chat. Uh, please feel free if you're going to ask questions and you can start doing so now or as we work through the presentation, ask um, um, a question through Q&A or if you prefer, you can use chat. I think the Q&A works a little bit better. Um, the other thing is I have a house full of children. I have five children under the age of 10. So while I have locked them up, um, um, they are quite crafty. So hopefully I, we won't get interrupted, but just to give you a fair, fair warning. Um, a little bit about uh, barcodes for those people that aren't as familiar. Uh, barcodes is a leading provider of bar obviously barcode, uh, mobile computing, RFID and identification solutions. Today, again, we're gonna be talking about a new solution, um, a temperature kiosk uh, that we have recently, recently launched. Jordan? Jordan, can you move to the next slide? Oh, thanks, Stuart. Um, so, so why um, are we talking about temperature kiosks today? Well, I think uh, for many of us um, in the businesses and the organizations that we represent, we're, we're anxious to get back to work. We're anxious to get back to some level of, of normalcy, to, to work with our customers and our partners. But in order to do that safely, uh, we need to create safe and healthy work environments and follow, as, as we've seen in the newspapers, uh, in the news, in the media and so forth, uh, state and federal recommendations for how we're going to set up a successful and uh, safe back to work program. And, and in, in any part of that, uh, obviously screening is, is, a, is a big part of that. Next slide. Um, there, so there's a number, you know, as we investigated the types of solutions that we thought were important for our customers and continually to today, um, you know, we come across a number of different solutions that, um, that are worth mentioning. So we want to highlight a couple of options that are out there before we sort of talk about um, where we landed. Um, there, there's primarily three. So um, a lot of organizations, uh, due to lack of technology, like the temperature kiosk that we're going to talk about today, because it's a fairly new solution, um, are using services. Now services, um, there's a monthly cost, they're quite expensive over a period of time. Um, they use short distance uh, temperature, for lack of a better word, uh, guns. Um, and obviously there is uh, human interaction. So that sort of uh, reduces the level of safety to some extent. So something to think about. Um, and again, it's an ongoing cost. Um, there's, um, there's technology out there that does mass um, um, movement. So you can have, you know, 15, 20, 25 people walk through an entrance at any given time, um, which is nice. Um, but they're fairly expensive. And when I say fairly for any door opening or any entrance, you're probably looking at 20 to $25,000 per entrance. Um, and obviously the technology behind them is, is fairly sophisticated uh, and complex, not only to just set up and to get going, uh, but also um, maintaining the system as well. And then there's kiosks that people are implementing uh, that are more health screening question survey type um, uh, kiosks. And so what we find with those in, in our conversations with customers and maybe why they weren't as keen on these ones is obviously it's based on honor system, so it's not as reliable um, but it's also the time it takes to get people through the door, um, which is obviously something to think about. Next slide. So, so our solution um, is a freestanding, hands-free, touchless um, uh, kiosk or device pedestal um, with voice prompts. So there's absolutely um, zero human interaction. Um, one of the nicest things about it um, is how fast it can engage with a person walking up to it. And Gerard's gonna give us a demo in a little bit, but you're probably talking about two, three, four feet away. It will start engaging and at that point, um, recognizes where the face is. It does this in less than a second. Um, the temperature um, the accuracy is phenomenal, uh, plus or minus 0.9 degrees, um, um, which is um, huge. 
um, its ability to turn off uh, and on additional alarms. So it has an LED, LED display. So if somebody's uh, within the threshold, it's green. If they're outside the threshold, it's red. There also there is also audible alarms that you can turn on and off. And uh, we'll talk to those as well. It does have a facial recognition uh, system built in, although uh, with complete transparency, most of the people that we're talking to the solution about now are more interested in the temperature aspect, less in the facial recognition, but it is there. Um, but one of the nice features about it, and, and I think part of any successful program, specifically where you can't social distance within a building or a facility, is the use of face masks. And one of the nice things about this, um, this solution is that in addition to measuring somebody's temperature, it can advise and alert whether somebody, it's got an algorithm built in that can advise and alert whether somebody has a face mask or is wearing a face mask or not. It has something called stranger mode. So if you have stranger mode turned on, I may have this wrong, either on or off, um, then it will force the user to be enrolled in the system prior to experiencing the, the solution, prior to walking up to it. Meaning it's primarily for employees that are supposed to be in that facility or, or walk through that entrance because it's gonna actually look that person up in a table. If you turn it off, um, then it will allow anybody. So you could have, you could then use the temperature kiosk as simply a temperature kiosk for visitors as well. It has land and Wi-Fi connectivity for some solutions and services that we're launching towards the end of this month. And we'll talk, we'll give you a little bit of information about that. Um, other important facts, uh, it's FCC certified for the US and CE certified for Europe. Um, and I think one of the biggest benefits to this solution compared to some of the other uh, services and solutions I just talked to on the last slide um, is that it's incredibly easy. I think Gerard's gonna talk to this a little bit in his demonstration. It's incredibly easy uh, to set up and maintain. So with that said, um, we'll move it over to Gerard and Gerard's gonna walk us through a, a demonstration. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning, folks. So you should be seeing now the uh, demo unit in uh, real time. On the right hand side is a camera view from the angle that will show me approaching the unit and interfacing with the unit. On your left hand side is a uh, real time screen share so that you have full detailed uh, visibility of what's happening on the screen itself. Uh, should be very well synchronized. I do uh, tend to talk a little bit slower so that uh, they do catch up and um, you, you don't have too much uh, interference with the uh, what, what I say and what happens on the screen. So Bruce mentioned that this device uh, is, is very easy for setting up. And, and it is true for the plug and play experience. This is one of the true out of the box plug and play type solutions that we've prepared as far as kiosks. And the whole purpose is this, is that we want the customers to be able to set this up in their location with minimal um, assembly or setting up. So unpacking this out of the box, you get rid of your packaging, you stand it up on its uh, base plate, a few minutes to do that, and then you take it, to, you take the power plug and plug it to the 120 volts AC outlet. Within 30, 40 seconds of plugging it into the outlet, the Android application launches, and this uh, device, as you see it right now, will go into its standby mode and you'll see the little wheels and gears spinning as it's standing by, ready to start screening your people. Out of the factory, it comes with some default settings. So um, one of the first things that your IT team or HR uh, folks might want to do are things like uh, changing the password, because access to the application back end on, the, uh, on this um, Android device is password protected. So you have your choice of setting up your password following the instructions that we will provide with the unit. Then you can um, change the time zone because you, you might be in a different time zone other than Eastern Standard. And those are the, the first preliminary setups that you might do. 
But right out of the box, this is how you will see the unit. It will be ready to uh, start screening. And I'll demonstrate this for you very quickly. What I'm gonna do is, uh, it's set up in mask mode. So Bruce mentioned the mask mode also. So I did pre-configure it for mask mode. I'm gonna walk up to the unit and I'm not gonna give any commentary. I'm just gonna let you hear and see the prompts as, uh, as, a, as I walk up to the unit and walk away from it. That way you can see firsthand and, and see what the uh, unit does and how, uh, how it guides the uh, user. So I'll just slowly walk up for the first few times. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Please wear a mask. Normal temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Please wear a mask. So uh, the device, as uh, Bruce mentioned, has an algorithm for detecting the presence of a mask on the person's face. And right now, because I've set that on as a, as a requirement, it's not giving me admittance. And uh, I will go ahead and now comply. You also heard uh, as the person's walking up, if they're not close enough, it says, please get close. So it, it's got a pretty clever algorithm to walk the person through a screening process as a first time user. Please get close for taking temperature. So there it is now, it's given me admittance. I have pre-enrolled as a persona in there, reversing my initials and stuff like that. So you see it recognize me, I have the mask on, it says, okay, let him come into the building because he's uh, under temperature threshold, he's wearing the mask, so uh, he's, he's good to go. Please get close for taking temperature. So, uh, Reg Durf came in in the morning, went to work, exited for lunch, had a lunch with the colleagues, but came back with a little bit of a temperature. And to simulate a temperature, <laughs> I'm going to use a uh, glass mug that I'm gonna elevate and place about my forehead. Abnormal temperature. Abnormal temperature. So right away, Reg Durf is not going to be given access to the building uh, because not only uh, is he, uh, he's there, I'm wearing the mask, but I'm out of temperature. Please get close for taking temperature. Abnormal temperature. So no entry, abnormal temperature. And if I try to fake it out by putting my hand over my face. Please get close for taking temperature. Please wear a mask. It's, it's not going to let me wear a mask. No, it's not going to gonna let me get in because I don't have a proper mask. Something that's non-temperature uh, um, heated, like my skin. So I'm just going to put a generic uh, painter's hood here to simulate another type of mask. temperature. So there it's letting uh, Reg Durf come in, even though I'm wearing a different type of mask than I had on before. So algorithms pretty clever and accurate in giving uh, proper screening to pe who, whoever presents themselves to the machine. So let's turn off mask. Please get close for taking temperature. And like I mentioned, it's password protected. So I'm using a uh, standard keyboard with an integrated mouse, uh, mouse but three mouse buttons and trackball. It's a standard uh, device that comes with the unit. So 
So I'm going to come in here under the platform settings and go into the application settings, go straight to the body temperature setting here, and I'm going to turn off the mask detection so I don't have to keep wearing the mask. And while I was there, I should have showed you. So here are some different settings that you have right out of the gate that you can um, address. You have uh, the alarm threshold that you can change. It's set in degrees Fahrenheit. That's why you see 38. So I've uh, nominated 38 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees, 0.3 Fahrenheit. You can change the display setting from Celsius centigrade to Fahrenheit here. The device does have a fan that's built into it and uh, you can turn that force it on all the time or it's um, automatically gonna turn on as necessary. And then here are those three different um, settings that we've talked about. The mask, the stranger mode, so stranger mode on right now. So it's screening for people who are enrolled and then um, stranger record. So you can actually turn off recording of stranger for uh, privacy issues. So now we're putting this back into production mode. You see, I, all I had to do was save. I just saved the setting changes and launched it back into production and the unit's ready to go. You don't have to reboot the device. So you don't have to go in there and power cycle it or anything. You just go back right into production mode following the instructions. And once you've done this once or twice, whether it's your IT team or your uh, HR folks, it's pretty easy to uh, uh, get the hang of it. And uh, now the unit's back in its uh, idle mode, waiting for somebody else to come up to it. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. There it goes, red dirt, no need for a mask. And if I was wearing a mask, it, it, it's not gonna interfere with it. Please get close for taking temperature. Normal temperature. Normal temperature. So if, if my habit, because I decided to constantly and always wear a mask, the facial recognition will be able to detect, detect me that I'm uh, wearing a mask, but there's Reg Durf showing up. And you'll notice the photo that, slap, that flashes up is the one that's saved in the uh, database for me. And it shows the picture that I uh, took, the date that I enrolled in. So uh, folks, really, you know, we, we looked hard and high and low for this, and we found that this was a really, a very clever, low, service uh, plug and play type of uh, setup. And uh, it's been working very well, very stable. The temperature uh, accuracy, as Bruce mentioned, plus or minus 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm seeing accuracies below that. You know, I, I see that it's probably been plus or minus 0 0.5. As far as the testing distance, 0.5 meters to a meter, so 24 to 36 inches away. You notice how as I approach to it, it's already waking up and sensing that there's a body in front of it and it starts to give me the prompts to get in there. And typically by that one meter mark, if not uh, definitely before I get to the half meter mark, it's captured me and, and it sees me. And uh, so that's, let's say that's a, you know, one to two seconds to uh, snap my face and capture me and, and give me that screening result. Hey, so, George, uh, just before you, uh, we go back to the, uh, the, the presentation, can you just talk to the unit itself, the, the, the quality, the, the, the glass, maybe put your hand up so people can sort of get an idea of the size? Correct. Yep, yep. So I was just going to finish off with that. So oh, okay. what, what you've got here is, you know, about, uh, it, it is exactly eight inch, LCD display, so it's a, a nice size screen, gives you plenty of uh, visibility for somebody who is a few inch, a uh, couple feet away. The form and fit and function of this device is really well done, high quality, the, the bezel to glass, 
It has a beautiful, seamlessly tight IP65 rating connection. So if you're wiping it down, and uh, I just use uh, some wiping down products that I get from the Office Depot store, and um, you you can't get dust or water inside here while you're cleaning it with those normal products. It stands at about 61 inches off the floor, so top of the camera, 64 inches. It's adjustable, so you can adjust the tilt the head unit, uh, 30 degrees range, up, facing downward, more or less. Um, very sturdy, has a nice uh, base plate so that it's uh, stable on the on the floor, and uh, very well put together. Uh, it, it'll be able to uh, provide you many, many uh, months and years of service in this with this configuration here. You've got the, the sensors in this portion of the display. That's that LED bar that will change from white to green if it passes or red if not. And up here is your thermal camera that's working in conjunction with these infrared and camera sensors down here. So thank you very much, folks. Uh, we'll uh, switch over to the questions. Okay, we just have a couple of uh, slides left to go through as Gerard hands it back here. You want to go to the next one, Gerard? There we go. Perfect. Uh, so some of the benefits that we like to highlight, obviously uh, a, a, a great tool solution as part of a return to work uh, um, program or a successful health and safety program. Um, adherence to uh, federal and state uh, recommendations, um, completely uh, touchless without any human interaction. Um, and, and I think it, um, it shows, or we think it shows, um, where, which is uh, important, and the reason we're, we're highlighting it, is that as, as, as us as employees and partners and customers come back to these offices, then it, it's, um, I, I'm trying to think, think of the word, but for, for lack of a better word, um, it, it instills confidence in the organizations, um, uh, how seriously they're taking the, these back to work programs. I think it instills confidence um, in safety for, for employees coming back that may be concerned. Um, one of the other, not necessarily a benefit, I meant to mention it earlier, um, you know, as, as we all sort of on a daily basis or every other day, we sort of what, what's going on with this pandemic. I, uh, the World Health Organization the other day um, uh, suggested uh, in, in their reports and their findings that um, we didn't know at the beginning, but it's, it's turning out that as we're doing more and more tracing, as countries are doing more tracing and that information is, is being uh, better understood, that the virus is actually being transmitted from systematic versus asystematic. Now, and I don't want to suggest anything. I'm not a medical expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just reading articles like everybody else did. But it was interesting that they're saying most most of the transmission is coming from. So, you know, because we have questions, well, if, you, if you're asystematic, how is this thing going to help you? Well, if you're asystematic, a temperature kiosk is not, which is not to say that it should not be included as part of an overall strategy. But with this news that the transmission of the virus is coming from systematic people, then this becomes a very valuable part of, uh, of any back to work program. Do you want to go to the next one, uh, Gerard? Just to, to re restate some of the capabilities or some of the sort of the, the features, um, obviously a, a solid temperature solution. Um, incorporates facial recognition, um, a very nice feature um, to, to support uh, business policy, again, specifically for those areas where you can't socially distance is having a mask policy in place helps to manage and um, um, uh, verify that somebody's wearing a mask. Um, the various alarm thresholds, um, you can set te uh, temperature calibration, and we didn't talk about ambient heat stuff, we can in the question period, but it helps, there, there is features within the configuration to help with uh, um, with um, lobbies that may have lots of sunlight and so forth. We can talk about that. Obviously, it's Wi-Fi enabled and LAN. We're going to talk to some services that we're coming up to in the next slide. It's got the two modes, either for employees, which means that people are enrolled in the system, kind of like, oh, 
Durf, I think was his name. Um, so that would be one mode, or you can have in stranger mode where you're not worried about, is this person supposed to be on the premise, but if they're coming through the gate or the door, do they have a temperature? Um, and so you could do that to anybody. Um, list price on this unit is 3250, so very affordable uh, when compared to either services that are five, six, seven thousand dollars a month um, to have somebody hold a gun, um, a temperature device, um, or some of these 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 more advanced systems that capture multiple people coming through. Um, there are various professional services based on the features and the configurations and connected to other systems. Um, what we're recommending is that people, and we'll, we'll put up some of the resellers and the brands um, of our partners that are, are distributing this product to, to talk to them. But there is warranty, uh, factory warranties in place. There's phone support. Um, there's inst uh, installation services and project management services, depending on the complexity of your project um, that you can uh, engage with. Next slide. Oh, I hear, I hear kids. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we talked about some services. So we are launching a cloud backend. So this, this solution works very well as a standalone solution. Um, so you can, you can roll, but, but um, it, for instance, if you're using facial recognition, not to go off on a tangent, and you want that particular person, Durf, to walk through two different entrances within a building, then they have to be entered, enrolled, separately in both those systems. There's no back end if, if, we, if you just buy it as standalone. There is a cloud service that we're launching at the end of the month um, that does a number of things. One of the things that it does is it manages the health um, um, of um, and, and the, um, whether the system is online and, and operating properly of all the kiosks. So if you have three, four, five, 100 kiosks within your organization, then this back end system will make sure that you know which ones are online or which ones may, may be having issues. Um, uh, it can synchronize facial recognition. So when you enroll a person in one kiosk, you'll automatically get the benefit of being enrolled in the other kiosk if that person may walk through a different door at some point in time. Um, reporting capabilities. So instead of having to go get reports off the device, which is what you do today, um, you can go to the cloud and actually see um, reports, um, analytics of all the devices, temperatures, people walking through, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also going to be um, notifications, or there, there is notifications we're launching at the end of the month, um, for if somebody comes in, it can notify security personnel or, or, or health and safety personnel within your organization that somebody walked through, you know, door number five, uh, kiosk number two, here is the picture of the person, and then, then you, can, you can search them out. It also supports the REST API for any technical people on the, on the, on the line with us right now, which allows you um, to integrate or share information with other third-party systems, whether that's an ERP system or an access control system. Um, and this, this service will sell, uh, it's MSRP uh, per unit per year um, is 295. I think that covers as an introduction, we certainly welcome one-on-one -on -one conversations um, for for those that are that are interested in investigating this further. Um, up on your screen now are the various brands um, through Barcodes Group that are distributing, selling, and supporting the product. We'll leave this up as we move to the question period, which we'll do now. But I want to thank you guys. Um, uh, for taking the time. We're quite excited about this. We think it's a very relevant solution um, in, our, in our current situation. So we're quite excited. Um, but we wanna thank you for taking the time to, in, to investigate this and learn more about it. Um, Edwin, we can open this up to questions. Um, I see that there's some on there now. So if you wanna ask any questions, we'll take some time to do that. Definitely, yeah, we have a few questions came in already and I'll uh, ask those, but uh, also, uh, Audience, if you'd like to continue uh, entering questions in the Q&A uh, box, then uh, we'll address those uh, either live uh, or privately. So first question here, will the system still work with a person wearing a hat or a person who has hair bangs or other obstruction blocking forehead? So uh, maybe I'll answer this with Gerard. So certainly Gerard, in the, in the last couple of demos we've done, Gerard has been wearing a hat. So yes to a hat. Um, it does have to have, be able to um, uh, 
measure the heat um, in the forehead area. So if it was obstructed completely, um, I, I'll let you know what I'll let Gerard answer that. I would think that that may be a challenge, but certainly wearing a hat, um, if you are purposely trying to cover your forehead, it may, it, you know, um, like Gerard did with the hot cup of water. If you technically walked up with a cold cup of water, I suppose you could you could mask something. But if, Gerard, go ahead and, and maybe. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, yes, Edwin, um, whether you're wearing a hat, a ball cap, or a fedora, you know, whatever type of hat you have, as long as there's a, a minimal exposure of forehead skin, a, 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 we could basically call it above the nose area, the algorithm with the sensor sensitivity will be able to resolve a temperature. And uh, I've had people show up with uh, different bang haircuts and you know uh, popular forehead covered bangs and it picks them up and reads and resolves the temperature. So the machine is, is quite uh, sensitive and forgiving, sensitive yet forgiving with the uh, amount of skin that's exposed. Um, and I've done the test uh, sometimes, I, I just forgot to bring a ball cap here, so, but I've done it with the ball cap many, many times uh, to test the machine and it works. Yeah, it's amazing, I've seen that. So if you had to make a guess, um, and this is probably for, you know, a business setting where multiple employees enter at the same time and maybe kind of making an estimate of, of how many of these units do we need. How many employees can, can filter through within like five minutes? Okay, so I'll take that one, Bruce. Yeah. The, uh, the accuracy and speed of the machine we nominate as two seconds. So we say two seconds to, to get somebody picked up as you walked up and you saw I would walk up a little bit slowly, but just like in any typical technology that uh, we see there today, once we get adapted to it, we pretty much walk through it and get breeze through it fast. So let's say two seconds at the most to, re to resolve a temperature and two seconds for the machine to reset. And you can, by the way, dial that down even more so that it can reset faster. Uh, on the average, I'm going to just round it up to five seconds. That gives you 12 people per minute. So that, that would be 60 people in five minutes. So you could, you could funnel 60 people through this machine if they're normally used to working with this type of machine. So that's a very good question for folks to consider. In that lobby, what's the peak traffic in the mornings and noon, whatever the shift changes are? How many people do you have coming through? And how many do you want to be able to process so you don't have those queue lines building up at the different machines? Right. So as a school, we're not allowed to save anyone's temperature. Does this program do that if we enroll users? And this is not taking temperatures, this is saving the temperatures. Okay, um, so uh, as you saw, um, this machine is screening and it's recording the temperature. So every time it screens a person, it's collecting a date time stamp, the temperature and a face uh, photo. It's saving it on the machine. So this machine is a standalone operation. It's saving it on the data, on, on its own database, which is not accessible to anything else because, because we're not connecting it, whether Wi-Fi or LAN in standalone mode. What, we, what we've been advising, and that's something that can be taken uh, in further discussion, is you have to manage it by the, the capacity and access to the device. So that's something that we can discuss with those uh, concerned customers on an off, offline basis. Yeah, just to add to that, I think through some professional services, I think that it does, but we could, you, you, could, you could set it up so that it, it wipes the information after a certain period of time. Like you may, uh, you may wanna hold on to it for say half an hour in case there's an issue that you need to resolve. Um, but, right. but to Gerard's point, we would, we would take, take that offline as, as, a, as a setup question for a specific environment. So maybe the opposite. We have 350 employees. We'll log each person by name where we can retrieve who has checked the temperature. 
and this is more like you know there's 350 people in the building um was everybody yeah. did everybody stop at the kiosk uh before they enter the building can we check that yeah so. certainly yeah it keeps a log and then it's a first in first out um again we we can set the log so you know to determine how long you want to save it but right now it's first in first out at approximately 20,000 records Gerard is that correct yes yeah so certainly cover your 350 yeah. for for many days so if someone has a temperature above the threshold does someone need to be present to keep that individual from proceeding or or does it send an email to notify someone? Or maybe you can touch a little bit on your alarm function and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so, so at, this, at this time, um, you would have to have a guard or some, some personnel in the lobby if you wanted to uh, prevent somebody from walking through, besides maybe an access control system that so you, know, you can think that they walk up to the kiosk, and if they pass the kiosk, then they can go and put their card up at the at the card reader and get through the door. So, um, so but at this point, it, it's it's very visual or audi uh, audible. Um, so you'd need somebody. When we launch the cloud service at the end of this month, you would no longer need somebody in the lobby. You could then send an email notification with a picture of the person. So um, can photos be uploaded or do they need to be taken with the units? How, how does that work? Gerard, I'll let you answer that. Okay. As it uh, exists today, it is deployed in the standalone mode. It's a one-to-one -one enrollment. So if you have multiple units in a lobby, uh, Reg Derf would have to enroll at each unit separately so that uh, the units can detect the facial recognition of the enrolled people. Like Bruce mentioned here shortly, the enterprise backend version with that software will tie in all the devices together and you have uh, less requirements. You don't have to go to each machine to enroll. You can uh, enroll the person only one time and uh, they will have uh, the capability of choosing whichever unit they want, whichever entrance in the in your facility, as long as they're all tied in together. But as far as George, as far as getting the first record in, could you put a you could you upload information to the unit? So if I had a picture of you, or do I have to get a live scan of your face? Um, we haven't tested the software yet, so we don't know exactly how that's going to be. Well, our understanding is you're going to be able to pull from Active Directory, for example. And oh, sorry, sorry. I, I mean, I mean, right now, if you if you went right, for, forget the 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 M zero oh. platform that's coming. If you went to the device right now, could you put a USB key in and upload an image no, to the device, have, or no, you have no, to take? You have to enroll one to one to the. Oh, you have to enroll. Okay, okay. I, th I think that. Okay, I think that answers the question. So, can this unit be set up outdoors <laughs> under a canopy? Um, that's a very tricky question, Edwin. Um, it's uh, pretty robust. Uh, the average, uh, the, the range of uh, advisable usage is 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But um, as we know, electronics and um, uh, this type of a device, you, you don't know what the humidity is gonna be in that environment. We are recommending indoor use. It's certainly not uh, recommend to be used outside um, in the open. Now the question came in if it was covered uh, potentially, but it, it's really I think what Gerard is saying. It's it's really an indoor. Uh, it's really an indoor device. It, it would have to be tested. Maybe it's something that uh, it's so light. Uh, sorry, just to add to Bruce's comment, it's so lightweight that you could possibly carry one out there, put the power to it, and it's working under a tent for a period of time, and then you brought it back indoors. Um, that's definitely possible, something that you could explore doing, but uh, you, you wouldn't want to permanently install this outdoors. Right, 
Right, and it has a built-in fan um, that that can the help with the the heat of the system. So, so we're not a clear answer. I, we apologize, not a clear answer to it. Not necessarily recommended, but uh, maybe some more testing on our part as we deploy these things. But it's it, the really, it, it's meant as an indoor device. Um, your question is interesting. If we're to to George's point, for a period of time, could you bring it out? Yes. Would you want to permanently install it out, out there under a tent? No. Got it. So um, good, good answer. The related question to that, that that we hear a lot is like, how does it work when you place it indoor in a facility and then different situations? Somebody, it's, it's hot outside, maybe it's 100 degrees outside. Somebody walks in from the outside. Uh, how accurate is this temperature that's being taken? Or the warehouse where this unit is, uh, is being placed is quite hot in the summer. Uh, does this affect the accuracy of the unit? It can. So what Gerard said, and I'll let him sort of finish it off with sort of the, some technical commentary. But there are there are adjustments that you can make to the device to compensate uh, for for the environment. This is a screening device. So if somebody comes in and and they were running, uh, as an example, it's going to show that they have an elevated temperature, and so it's it screens them. It's and and you know you you pull that person to the line or you talk to the person, you stop them from going to the the next stage. Um, you realize that it's not a temperature they wrote jogging in the afternoon or, or at their lunch break. You see, you know, say, wait for uh, five or 10 minutes and then and then you retest them. A again, it's a screening device. Um, as far as uh, the adjustments, Gerard, I'll let you speak to what uh, adjustments are available to account for um, higher heated areas or, or temperature discrepancies. Right. Yeah, so uh, the device settings comes with a offset field that uh, we, you saw it briefly when we were going back into the application settings. What that allows you to do is if you are in that scenario, uh, factory floor, very uh, elevated temperature, as opposed to my 75 degrees office temperature here, maybe it's 85, 90 degrees, we, we have to be uh, completely uh, uh, cognizant that the sensors are going to operate at a higher temperature as well. So maybe they're resolving and screening giving you a higher temperature. That field allows you to apply a plus or minus factor. And uh, you can give it the, the IT department or the HR folks as they're monitoring it. Oh, you know, we see people are coming in. They're a little bit higher temperatures than we would expect. When we had it in the lobby, they were coming in at 97.5. Now that we got them back here in the uh, warehouse and the units uh, showing temperatures of 99, 90.5, .90 you would come in and, and you could apply uh, the, the instructions show you how to give it, get to that. Uh, a factor, let's say you want to put in a half a degree Celsius and that field is in Celsius because remember the algorithm that's running in the application is running in centigrade Celsius. So that would allow you to put a minus factor so that the temperature now is reading more in line with an accurate uh, body temperature back down into the 97.5 range that you, you were experiencing in a more uh, ho um, hospitable um, lobby environment. Does that answer the question? It does. So we'll, we'll move from temperature to light. So how much light control must be considered? Would the device work through an enclosure with glass or plastic front? Um, would the temp reader and camera still work that way? That's a great question uh, about the two, the two part question there, the lighting. So you want to be very um, judicious of the setup environment you would not want to point the camera and the sensors and the display in a direction where you have a very strong source of light, for example, a halogen light or a bank of LED lights or towards the uh, lobby glass entrance of a building. If you had a, some kind of a building with a very uh, developed glass front that lets a lot of strong sunlight come in, you would want to be judicious about setting that up 
so that you, you minimize that type of interference. Um, but it, as you can see, in my office here, I have a central light source uh, that it works very well with, um, and it's quite reliable. The second part of the question about the, the, the pain, can it work behind a pain? Um, we have not extensively tested that, so uh, we don't want to say that it's always going to work, but uh, you would want to test that on a case-by-case -case basis because we don't know what thickness of uh, whatever material you're using to, to put in between you and the machine. But re always remember, this is a uh, designed to be contactless, touchless machine for the temperature screening. So there's, there's no need to uh, uh, insulate it and uh, protect it, as well as it can be cleaned. So you can access it uh, very easily and clean it and, and keep it uh, sanitary. That's great. So how soon will the data upload to the cloud? Uh, what, I, I mean, as uh, I'm taking the question is when will that be available? Yeah, but then when it's available, how how quickly will that take place? Uh, so it it will well we're, we're going to launch it. It'll be it'll be available. Uh, it will take place uh, on the same day. Um, we uh, the uh, June thirtieth is is the the current launch date, um, and, and we are we're quite confident that that we had we did have to have full disclosure. We had to move it back. It, we were we were hoping to launch it. Uh, mid June, but we've we've moved it back a couple of weeks just to uh, um, address a couple of, of additional features that we're we're keen on um, for some customers. But uh, but yeah, we're quite confident that uh, J June thirtieth will uh, will launch the that that service and make it available to customers. Yeah, and and once it is launched, the update is real time. So as the folks are walking up to the devices out there. It's updating instantaneously, real time to the back end. Yeah, that's that last bit was probably what the the customer was asking for. So that's great. Um, can there be a limit, or is there a limit on people that have access to add employees to the system? Go ahead, Trey. Yes. So this device is protected with a password. Um, so there's no, there are no visible external ports on it. Um, you would have to come in here and perform maintenance using a keyboard and the application is password protected. So how does the device calibrate temperature now? That, that's a great question. And as Bruce mentioned earlier, we are not um, selling this as a FDA compliant temperature reading device, it screens. So there are no strict requirements for calibration. That is uh, really up to the end user's uh, discretion, whether they want to do some kind of a, you know, they, in, the, in the temperature screening environment, they call uh, industry, they call that a black box. So you could uh, definitely um, use that type of device to uh, address and, and verify the accuracy. But there no, there's no requirement to do any kind of calibration on this device. So then the integration, um, we've seen this question a lot. Uh, is there integration with an access control system? Can this device be used in coordination with a time clock? Could you uh, talk a little bit about that topic? Uh, yeah, uh, so so there, there there is integration. Certainly when we come out with the, the backend platform, there'll be more. Um, Gerard can speak if, if you want to to some of the um, uh, um, uh, the Wigan outputs uh, for for access control. But I will say it's fairly at this point it's fairly limited. It's certainly um, an area that we're going to be investing more resources in. We are working with a couple of access control partners as as certainly at a application level. Uh, uh, there is with M0 and the REST APIs to share information. But um, things like being able to automatically open a door, there are some capabilities within it. I know I'm not given a great answer for this. Um, it's it's more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, depending on the time clock. Um, you know, whether you're looking at a Kronos time clock or some other one, uh, the standards, the access control, the type of cards out of the box. It does support MyFair. Um, um, 
which which is which is fine, but not necessarily um, really relevant for North America, as most uh, technologies over here are HID Prox or I Class or CIOS or one of these newer technologies from HID. So the, a very long-winded dance around answer. Um, there are some capabilities to do so at, a, at an application level. At a hardware level, we are very committed to to, to investigating this further as part of the roadmap. Um, better to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about that was long-winded and, and danced around. I apologize, but it, it's a little bit more it, a little bit more involved. Yeah, and just to complement that answer, as it stands right now, standalone, there is an output. It's a relay output on or off, and that can be leveraged right now by the end user if they wanted to interface it with uh, part of their. Uh, lobby entrance, uh, do they have a door, do they have a turnstile? So that relay output stays open until the uh, requirements are met, whatever you're screening, temperature, mask, um, as long as, uh, and, and, and uh, facial recognition. So once the person has been admitted, that relay closes and you can adjust how long that relay is gonna stay closed so that it can interface with whatever uh, your uh, host building um, system that you're using, it was turnstile or door or whatever. So that's available right out of the box today on this unit. So this, this kiosk has been available through these um, storefronts as you see on the screen for, for a while now. Can you talk a little bit about what use cases you see for this? Uh, the question that, that's, that maybe led me to ask that question is, can it be used for members in a health club facility or only for an office environment? Where do you see these, these kiosks go at this moment? What it was the, what's the use case? You know, you would, you would think that every manufacturer and distributor is going to give the same answer as me. It's, it's, but it is. It's quite broad. Um, you know, let's talk through a couple. Uh, restaurants, I mean, which people may not think, wow. Uh, but, but certainly, uh, because it's so non-intrusive, you just walk past it really quickly. You don't have to be enrolled. So you can just, you know, capture people, um, you know, um, and, and then turn off the audible and, and people walk in so they know they're safe. That, that may be a use case that, that diners uh, uh, want to see certainly health clubs absolutely I'm anxious to get back to the gym it's probably going to be one of the, the last in Canada it's probably going to be one of the last things that uh, that open up um, but but certainly that would give me more confidence as as a patron uh, patron um, certainly office buildings manufacturing facilities absolutely um, clinics um, yeah I mean it's hard to find a use case that 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 isn't relevant right now um, to it so I, I don't know if that, yeah, I mean, there's, where, I mean, and depending on, on the brands, these brands service different, different parts of the market. So for instance, Gerard and I sort of represent our enterprise team. Um, so we spend a lot of our time talking with our enterprise customers, um, you know, the, the Fortune 500 companies, and, and there's a strong interest and in people are, t you know, testing, you know, hundreds of companies that we work with are testing. So some of the other brands that you see on the screen, um, service SMEs, your, your main street shops, um, uh, healthcare um, um, facilities and institutions and clinics. It's, it's, it's really, I would say it's really, really broad. Um, it, it's, a, it's a nice device. It's, it's, it's easy, it's, it's cost effective, it works. Um, it's fast. Um, I, I know I, you know, I'm, it, it, you know, I'm, now I'm selling. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice unit and I, I think it has broad applicability. And what kind of setup do you see your customers go with? Um, is there a receptionist close by? Does the receptionist, how does this receptionist get alerted? Um, question came in, can you set up another monitor for the receptionist to view the results that, that are on that screen? How, how do people use this and then stop employees that, have abnormal yeah. temperatures. So, so right now, people are buying one or two of these devices to test out. All right. Um, I mean, this is what this is three weeks old, Edwin. A month since we launched it, we're shipping them out. So, I, I you know, I, I don't want to get on the phone here and say we've got years, or anybody in the industry has got years and years experience, no matter what country um, you're in. You know, maybe maybe overseas in in, in Asia and so forth, maybe a little bit more, but. Um, so as of right now, um, you, you would, as we suggested, 
and our customers are testing them with somebody in the area of the device. Once, as far as like a second screen or something, or could you remove that person? Once the M0 platform is launched at the end of the month, then they'll be, it'll be a lot more versatile in saying, hey, if a person walks in, we can shut down the door or you know, make sure that they can't get into the door. We can turn on a camera. We can notify somebody with their picture. There's gonna be a lot, so you wouldn't actually, but as of right now, where people are buying one or two units because that's all they need for their small shop uh, or office, or you know, it's, I don't wanna mention names necessarily, but it's, it's, it's a larger brand. Um, they're testing them out. Um, right now, the testing is focused on they have to see the device because that's that's what we have available. Again, once once the M0 platform is available, then there's a lot more use cases that will will open up where you don't need somebody um, next to the device or close by. Maybe we'll end with a simple one. Um, you addressed it somewhat, but maybe a, a good uh, refresher too. Uh, one is, you know, the, the height. So somebody may be in a school situation, you have preschoolers and you have faculty, or somebody in a wheelchair. Uh, how, do you, how do you deal with, with height? Um, and how far away from the unit do you have to stand to have your temperature be taken? Gerard, I'll let you, I'll let you address this one. Okay, thanks, Ruth. So, um, like we showed, the head unit is adjustable uh, with a 30 degree tilt range. So, to capture shorter uh, folks and uh, wheelchair users, it could be angled downward. You need to be about half a meter to a meter, so 24 inches to 36 inches away from the device. Um, I'm noticing that the majority of the time when I'm a meter away, um, it's picking me up. So you don't have to be right up on it. That, that's a good thing. And so the, the, the camera sensors have about a 50 degree field of view. So a 50 degree cone field of view. You, you saw as I was demonstrating, I showed up and it, it was picking up the side of my shoulder and my torso as I walked into view. So within uh, three feet away, 24 inches definitely, it's captured you. Very, very sensitive. Well, I think we've reached the top of the hour, Bruce. So if you uh, can close and thank the attendees, this was wonderful. Lots of questions, well, appreciate the interest. Yeah, yeah, I mean, th th these, are these are fun to do and it it's exciting to think about going back to work, and, but we need to go back to work safely. So I think, again, I thank everybody for joining us and, and, uh, and learning more about, about the device. For any questions that were not answered, um, you can certainly contact your representative at the various brands that you do business with currently, your, your, your account managers and so forth. Um, we have a technical team on right now that's going through and sifting through the questions and we'll address them if they weren't addressed uh, by myself or Gerard. But again, thank you very much. Um, and we hope this was, uh, was some useful time for you guys. Take care.